I love you. Well, if this is working properly, which I believe it is, we are back. <laughs> okay, we are back. Jumping okay. back in. Dang. Round three. I'm not going to break this laptop. Or my camera. Nope, not going to do it tonight. Not tonight. Okay. Round three. So. Benefits. Benefits to marriage. We talked about intimacy. We talked about. Finances. Finances. Prayer partner. Homie. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, I mean, even if you think about like our closest friends, like it was a benefit, you know, your friend became my friend, my 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 friend became your Uh, friend, married, Mm -hmm. your best friend. And that that rarely happens. But I remember we would talk about that for hours, for hours, like stay up at night, just talking about what our spouse is going to be like, what our our wife is going to be like, what our family is going to be like. What are we going to do in life? We talk about uh, business and ministry. And and Isaiah, if you're tuning in tonight, love you. Uh, Rumi, love you. But we talked about those things for hours upon hours and days and talked about what this was going to happen. And now we're literally walking in that, talking about what we've talked about with our, with our, uh, over the future, what was going to happen with our life. So, so now we're actually doing it. And now the, the exact thing that we, one of the exact things that we talked about was that our wives would be best friends. They would go shopping together. They would go hang out. And that actually happened. I was like, man, yeah, that, okay, is that, that has to be the Lord in order to do that. And then the Lord did it. So, ah, godly marriage with benefits. So, thank you, Jesus. All right. If we seem nerve-wracked at the moment, it's because <laughs> everything just went broadcast to crap. The mic went but out. you know the, what? The camera. We made it. The camera. We made it. We made We're it. High five. The camera like glitched out. The live stream glitched out. <laughs> so, praise God. We're gonna get into this teaching, and we're not gonna let it stop us. So. If you're with me, I'm going to read a bunch of scripture tonight. But the benefits of marriage, most people are not walking in these benefits. And unfortunately, they live their entire married life together, never experiencing uh, even the tip of the iceberg of, of these benefits of being married. And that's a sad thing that there's people in churches right now who fighting, arguing, uh, not trusting their spouse, lying to one another. Children aren't serving the Lord. Things like that going on in their marriage. And they don't understand that a part of the covenant that God made with Abraham entitled these blessings. And these blessings just didn't stay with Abraham. When God said that he was going to give Abraham his seed, that out of his seed, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. That seed wasn't just Abraham. He didn't say seeds like the Bible said, like out of your seed. He said out of your seed. And we know now that that seed was Christ. Jesus Christ is that seed. And as he's that seed, we are part of the family of God. We are part of the family of, of Abraham. We, are, we inherit Abraham's blessing. Mm-hmm. The Bible says that we are the children of Abraham now because we have put our faith in God. As it was accounted unto Abraham as righteousness, so it is accounted unto you. So it is accounted unto me, so it is accounted to my wife. It's accounted unto us. And as it's accounted to us, Everything that Abraham had is ours. So people say that Abraham's blessings are mine. Yes, Abraham's blessings are yours. But you must know what is yours. It's like the story I heard with the man who had uh, the bank account. And he lived homeless. And he died homeless, eating food out of the trash can, uh, sleeping under overpasses and in alleyways and, and getting rained on. And then eventually he died from malnourishment. And then later on, when they came to do uh, research on the guy, they came to study and figure out who he was. The guy actually had, I think he had like fifty or $60,000 in his banking account. Mm-hmm. And he could have spent it, if not more than that, could have spent it any point of his life. But he had no idea that there was compound interest building up on the very amount that he had laid for him in the bank account. And don't let that be you. Amen. And we don't want that to be you. And that's not going to be you. The fact that you have things laid up for you now here on earth, 
You don't have to have a religious mindset about it and say that, oh, yeah, when I get to heaven, I'm going to inherit all the things that God had for me. Everything that I went through, God, God has so much store for me on the other side. God does have store, stuff stored up for you in heaven. If you're a giver, if, if you believe the word of God, if you know what the word of God says, the Bible says that, that, that Jesus went to go prepare a mansion for mansions. We have mansions in heaven for us right now. That the, He said if it was not so, he would not have told us. But he told us right there in his word. Now, do you think that God would just want to give a mansion in heaven and not want to give a mansion here on earth? Would not want you to live your best life, the life that Jesus Christ died for you, and then you come back and then uh, uh, you go to heaven and then you discover God tells you, pulls you aside and says, hey, here to let you know that, you know, I'm glad you made it in. Well done, my good and faithful servant. But come this way. There were some things I wanted to show you that I was going to give to you and have made available down there on the earth for you. And all you had to do was just receive them. All you had to do was get in this word, figure out exactly what that is, remind, put me in remembrance of my word and walk out the acts of willingness and obedience and you would eat the good of the land so just as it is uh for abraham just as it is for us and i'm endeavoring tonight to show that to people and show that to you on looking through the other side of the screen you're watching this now you're going to watch it later on god has blessings for you don't stay in a place where you don't know anything about the blessing of god you never hear anything about the blessing of god you spent 20 years in church and you've never heard one thing about the blessing of God. You had to go to outside sources to figure out there's a blessing from God. God has a blessing for me. God has things for me. That's a problem. If you're somewhere right now and you don't know that God has blessings for you, then you need to do a spiritual checkup and realize, am I in the church? Am I in the place where I need to be at right now to where I'm hearing that God has something for me? Because Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. So I'm going to start up like three scriptures. And use these scriptures and memorize these scriptures. And they all come out of Galatians 3. So Galatians 3, 29. And I have it flipped up one right here. The Bible says, now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. Now that you belong to Christ, you are now the true children of Abraham. You should be happy about that. That you are a child of God. That everything that God said that Abraham that belongs to Abraham belongs to you. It belongs to me. It belongs to us. Continuing on. You are his heirs and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Flip, the, go over, go up a few scriptures. Verse 26. For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So not only are we children of Abraham, but we're also children of God. So how does that work? Because God said it, and God set it in place that way, that through Jesus Christ, we are now heirs of Abraham. And now we partake of those blessings. But don't forget, we are also children of God. That means we have God's DNA. Think about that. You have the blessings that God gave to Abraham. Hallelujah. You have the blessings that God gave to Abraham. But then you also have the DNA, the nature of God. You have heaven's riches. You, you, you can't get any richer. There's no one more richer than you here now on the earth. There's not one person, Warren Buffett, uh, Elon Musk, the riches of the riches. Doesn't matter who in India, in Ethiopia, in Europe, in Asia, in America, doesn't matter. They're not more rich than you. They don't have more than you. You have it already made available to us, already made available to us right now. And all you have to do is receive it and partake of it. So next one is Galatians 6. Galatians 3, excuse me, verse 6. In the same way, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. The real children of Abraham then are those who put their faith in God. You are a real child of God. You're a real child of Abraham when you put your faith in God. And if you Jesus said, if you believe me, you also believe the one who sent me. Jesus said that he met Abraham. He said Abraham longed to look for that day and he's seen it. So, and it made the, the Pharisees and the, and the Sadducees angry. That's what happens today. That spirit has not left this earth. The people, religious people, people say prosperity is not for today. Divine healing is not for today. The Holy Spirit is not for today. The gifts of the spirit aren't for today. They say all that stuff because it is, King comes from that same Pharisee, Sadducee, Antichrist spirit that still in this earth today, that still operates through people even who stand in pulpits and leadership. 
people who are in the world. And they, they don't even understand. I don't believe in that prosperity gospel. What is the prosperity gospel? If I can ask you that, please explain to me. What is the prosperity gospel? Can you tell me? Because if you can't tell me, it's a good idea to keep your mouth shut because you have no idea what you're talking about. But why would God put all this in the word of God and say that you can't have it or your family can't have it? It would be impossible. He would then be a liar. And he said he is not a liar. So I'm going to read, I'm going to read Galatians, Genesis chapter 24. And there are seven things that I have that we have in store for you tonight that out of the blessing of God, that I want you to see this, that when God made the promise to Abraham that this was going to happen and this was going to happen, this was going to happen. I want you to see for yourself. And from this day forth, your eyes are going to come open and you're going to know for yourself in the word of God that we're no, 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 no. I'm not going to be lied to one more day in my life. The devil's not going to lie to me. I'm not going to listen to what the world says. I'm not going to listen to what my family says I can't have. You can have what God says you can have. And you can identify where it is at in the Bible. In Genesis chapter four, right after Abraham just offered Isaac up on the altar of sacrifice. After Abraham had, had showed a type and shadow of God the Father, just now offering Jesus up as our, as our sacrifice because that was a type and shadow of God the Father offering Jesus, being Jesus, uh, Isaac representing Jesus, mm -hmm. God the Father Abraham, right. offering him up for our sins. That Jesus was the lamb slain before the world. That Jesus was the one who was offered for our sakes, bled out his blood, that now we can be free from sin. That now we can be made the righteousness of God. So, just a type and shadow. And I'm going to start with Genesis chapter 24, verse 1. Actually, I'm going to switch it up. Are you gonna have to <laughs> Would you okay. mind reading? Yeah. How, how far do you want me to read? Uh, let's see. I'm actually going to read the entire chapter. But, oh, Lord. <laughs> I'll stop you. Okay. Go to actually, go from Genesis 24. 1 to 4. Okay. Abraham was now a very old man, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. One day, Abraham said to his oldest servant, the man in charge of his household, take an oath by putting your hand under my thigh. Swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not allow my son to marry one of these local Canaanite women. Go in, go instead to my homeland, to my relatives, and find a wife there for my son Isaac. All right. The first thing. Verse 4. You mind reading that again? Go instead to my homeland to my relatives and find a wife there for my son Isaac. Find a wife for my son Isaac there in the homeland. He didn't say go back. He had to, actually, I'll go down. Verse five and six, I'll read it. The servant asks, but what if I can't find a young woman who is willing to travel so far from home? Should I then take Isaac there to live among your relatives in the land you came from? No, Abraham responded. Be careful never to take my son there. For the Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and my native land, solemnly promised to give this land to my descendants. He will send his angel ahead of you, and he will see to it that you find a wife there for my son. Number one, there is a spouse for you Amen. in a godly marriage. God has promised it to Abraham. He said, no, there is going to be one from the land, uh, uh, from your family's land. But don't take my son there. Don't remove him from where he's at now. No, there's one there. And actually, he sent the servant to go and bring the one back to him. So wherever you are right now, there is someone for you. If you're not married, if you're divorced, if you're a widow, there is someone for you. And if you're married, you are with that one right now. Open your eyes. There, that person's right there. Don't, don't go looking for someone else. Uh, no, you are with that one right now. But there is a benefit if you're not with someone, if there's not someone with you right now, God has someone for you. And you can stand on scriptural basis. Genesis chapter 24, verse 1. Absolutely not. Father, you said in your word that you had a servant, you had a wife for Abraham, for Abraham's son, Isaac. I know that you have a spouse for me, mm -hmm. whether you're a male or you're a female. Which Father, I know that you have a husband for me. 
Would you say that that was actually one of the things that you had to... Like anything that we get in life, anything that comes by faith, it comes because there's an understanding. It's like when you're, the Bible says Absolutely. the entrance of his word brings light and understanding to the simple. So in the same way, when you recognize God is good, he's faithful, and he wants me to be married, and he wants me to be happy, he wants me to have a relationship with somebody, that's when God is actually able to move because you, you have understanding that he is who he said he is. Amen. And so when you were when you were saying that, I was just like, you know, that's is the same faith is the same in the faith for finances is the mm -hmm. same for a faith for a spouse. Amen. Faith for a house is the same faith that you have to use, you know, to raise someone back from the dead. It's the same faith. Mm -hmm. The same faith applies all across the board. You just have to use the faith. You have you already have the faith available. Mm -hmm. He said he's already given us the measure of faith. Regardless if you're a man believing for a wife or a woman believing to be found exactly. by your husband. It's this still... was actually the passage of scripture. This chapter alone was what God used to open my eyes one day. I remember where I was. I was laying on the floor and it, and I was just talking to the Lord in, in worship. And I remember the Lord talked to me. He was like, I want you to flip open to Genesis chapter one. I want you to mm -hmm. read. And I sat there and I read and as I was reading, the Lord was just highlighting to me this, 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 this. That God had a, had a, had a daughter, had a wife for Isaac. And it's the same way that God does for you. And as I read through that passage of scripture, my eyes came open more and more and more. And the glory of God that just covered me. And I was like, oh my gosh. God has a wife, has a wife for me, mm -hmm. and this is exactly who she is. And this it is takes the all the. I feel like it takes all the worry out of it too. It because you're like, the, if God puts it together, first of all, no one can separate it, and then mm -hmm. secondly, if God puts it together, it's gonna be good, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be the perfect match, the exactly. perfect fit. Exactly, and you're not gonna try to force it and try to make it happen. All you have to do is just continue to walk out the steps. Don't be a weirdo for one, but number two, like, do you know be, how be popular the be power yourself. of the idiot thing got? Oh, yeah. The power of the idiot. And then everyone, <laughs> they were commenting, power of the idiot. We're going to make a shirt. This I'm going to make a shirt that says the power of the idiot. And we're going to have like a little cartoon with his hand and the crown leaning off to the right. The power of the idiot. We should make that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, sorry to interrupt. No, for real. I think it was good. So, number one, God has a spouse for you. You don't have to go looking to kiss frogs like my wife said. Mm -hmm. That was the word that she received from Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. You don't have to go kiss frogs. God will give you a prince. Mm -hmm. and, and same thing for you. If you're a woman. You don't have to go kiss frogs. You don't have to take every guy that comes your way because he's interested in you. Guys, you don't have to take every woman that comes your way because she, she thinks you're cute or she likes you. No. God will give you a queen. God will give you a godly woman. He'll give you a godly man. And, and, and if that's for you, I want you to write it in the comment section. If you're saying... And, I know that. I know that to be true. Right? That a godly woman or a godly man. And, and say it for yourself. I'm a godly woman. Or say it if you're a man. I'm a godly man. Put it in the comment section. Uh, let's see. Number two. Land inheritance. God will give you land inheritance. He will give you a home. He will give you land. The Bible says the bar is servant to the lender. So why would out of all those years, out of Genesis, out of Exodus, out of Numbers, out of Leviticus, out of Deuteronomy, out of all just the first five books of the Bible, would God turn land and property and homes over to his people, even to Abraham? Why would God turn it over to him and then turn around and sit there and say, yeah, but you know, it's the New Testament. I want you to be a, I don't mind you being a borrower. It, that hasn't changed. God hasn't changed. God has land inheritance for you. And you should be happy about that. If you're taking notes, write that down. Number two, land inheritance. Let's see. Verse seven. The Bible says that for the Lord, the God of heaven, took me from my father's house and gave my native. Wait, make sure I read that right. For the Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house, my native and my native land, solemnly promised to give this land to my descendants. He will send his angel ahead of you. And he will see to it that you find a wife there for my son. God promised that there will be land inheritance for Abraham's son. He promised that it will go to Abraham. And then from there, he said that it will go to his descendant. 
So you are a descendant of Abraham. You are of the family of Abraham. Those scriptures I read earlier in Galatians 3. If you, if you take Galatians 3 and you cope it with this right here, it's two powerful scriptures. You can stand on and say, God, you said that Abraham's seed, that Abraham's seed, that this was promising, that land was promising to him. And then that I know for me and my house and my family, you have land for us. You have a house for us. You don't just have a tiny house for us where we're all trying to squeeze in there. You, and and it's, not a, it's not a land in a dangerous neighborhood. I'll add that in there. It's not in the ghetto. It's not in the hood. Why would God put you in a dangerous situation? Why would God put you in a, a dilapidated situation? That's not the goodness of God. That's not leading people to repentance. People were like, that's your God? That's the God you serve? He put you in a, in a rundown house? He put you in a rundown shack? No, God gives at land to his people. God gives property to his people. God gives cities to his people. If you can believe it, if you can grab a hold of what I'm saying now, the Bible says nothing will be impossible for you. Mm -hmm. Nothing is impossible for them that believe. Right. All you have to do is believe what God said and it will not be impossible for you. Land is not impossible for you. Homes is not impossible for you. Property is not impossible for you. All things are possible to him that believes. If God did it for Abraham, if he did it for Isaac, if he did it for Jacob, and if you put Joseph second in command in Egypt, God is and will do it for you. Remember that and say it out of your mouth from this day forth. Don't sit there and say, well, the economy's hard. It's hard to get a house right now. It's hard to get a loan. Why are you trying to get a loan? Did God say go get a loan? Did God say, hey, I want you to go uh, figure out what the interest rates are and then figure out, you know, how much you can get of a loan and then how much you can put aside for a down payment. If that's the way that God spoke to you to work that way, then work that way. But as for me and my house, reading the word of God, God said it right here. He says, I have given, he gave land unto Abraham. And then Abraham understood the covenant, understood the covenant, understood the covenant and turned around and said, if God said he was going to give land to my children, he already knew. Do you know? You are a child of God and God has land for you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you look surprised when I son. <laughs> but God has land. God has land for you. Mm -hmm. God has land for me. God has land for everyone who will grab a hold of it. The Bible didn't say that the, the wicked will dwell in the land for it actually says that the wicked will not dwell in the land forever. What do you think all uh, all these islands and all the, these homes and uh, Martha's Vineyard and all these places are? Do you think they're just for the wicked to go and dwell in and to do whatever wicked scheme they think of, whatever evil scheme, whatever plot? How is it that there are government officials who have three mansions, but yet there's people in the inner city struggling? How is it that people, they come into office making six figures and they come out with eight figures in their banking account? That they have offshore bank accounts? Absolutely not. You wicked and crooked, perverse people. You're going to see very quickly that the tables are going to flip and then God's going to take whatever the wicked had laid up, like the Bible says, and it's going to come into the hands of the righteous and watch it happen before the end of this year. Watch it take place. And it's happening speedily. Even right now, there are men of God all around this world. There are men of God in America inhabiting homes, you know, grabbing hold of businesses, grabbing hold of churches, grabbing hold of land. Our pastor, Evangelist Jonathan Shuttlesworth, grabbing hold of land. 24.8 acres of land. And then now they have a church going in, in Fort Worth, Texas. Dr. Rodney Howard Brown continuously building upon uh, like a nation down there. I don't, I don't even know if you want to call it a church. It's like he got a whole nation in Florida. You might as well just name Florida after Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, how big it is. But land turned over to the people of God. People spend their entire lives. Well, I, and that, that breaks my heart. I hate that. I hate seeing that. I hate seeing... Uh, a married couple, they've been married, happy, serving the Lord for 40 years, 50 years, 60 years. Oh, I got to go pay rent. I got I to go talk to my landlord about this. Mm -hmm. Why? Why did you have to go talk to the landlord? You should be the landlord. You should be the one running the show. You should be the one. Uh, I promise you, me and my wife, before it's all said and done, we're going to own apartments. We're going to own houses. And we're going to lease them out and rent them out to people and sell them to people. I'm tired of seeing the wicked jack up interest rate prices. I'm tired of seeing people struggling to get by, working three jobs just to try to put food on the table for their family. I'm, I'm done with it. I'm done with this wicked system. The, the, the system that they, they kick the man out the home, have the woman working all day long and put the children in public school and indoctrinate them with devils. 
and doctrines of devils. And you mean to tell me we as the people of God, we have to go rent from someone who doesn't even like our, like the church, doesn't even like God, doesn't even like the things of God? Absolutely not. Hell no. Hell to the no. Hell to the no, no. I'm not going to stand for it. And I'm not going to put up for it one more day, one more hour. I'm tired of seeing it. I'm tired of seeing it. Even before it's said and done, we will be the ones who own apartments. We'll be the ones who own businesses. We'll be the ones who own towns and cities. And if that's you, I want you to comment amen in the comment section. That that's you. Type it in there. Believe it. Believe bigger than what you've seen before. Believe bigger than just having an apartment. Believe bigger than just having some small home, staying in a trailer or staying somewhere and saying, well, it's all right. It's all good. You know, as long as we're alive, as long as we have all, all our needs met. Is that what you are? Are you just an animal? As long as I have my needs met, as long as I'm eating, as long as there's somewhere I can poop, as long as somewhere I can have sex and I can stay warm at night. Is that it? That's not the extent of your life. And that's not the extent of a child of God's life. Amen. Amen. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Keep reading. It doesn't say keep reading. I'm actually just going to keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do make notes like that where I say keep reading to help me stay focused. Let's see. Hmm. Where do I want to go? I said I was going to read the entire chapter. It's a big chapter, but I'm going to do it. Let's see. Nine. So the servant took an oath by putting his hand under the thigh of his master, Abraham. He swore to him to follow Abraham's instructions. Then he loaded 10 of Abraham's camels with all kinds of expensive gifts from his master. And he traveled to distant, traveled to distant Aram Haram. 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 I actually looked this word up earlier to make sure I pronounced it correctly. Uh, let's see. There he went to the town where Abraham's brother Nahor had settled. He made the camels kneel beside a well outside the town. It was evening and the women were coming out to draw water. O oh Lord, God of my master, this is the servant, Abraham, show, pray, wait. O oh Lord, God of my master, Abraham, he prayed. Please give me success today and show unfailing love to my master, Abraham. See, I'm standing here besides this spring and the young women of the town are coming out to draw water. This is my request. I will ask one of them, please give me a drink from your jug. If she says yes, have a drink and I will give water to your camels too. Let her be the one you have selected as Isaac's wife. Mm -hmm. This is how I will know that you have shown unfailing love to my master. Before he had finished praying, he saw a young woman named Rebecca coming out with her water jug on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, who was the son of Abraham's brother, Nahor, his wife, Milka. Rebecca was very beautiful and old enough to be married, but she was still a virgin. She went down to the spring, still, she went down to the spring, filled her jug, came up again, running over to her, wait, running over to her, the servant said, please give me a little drink of water for my jug. Yes, my Lord, she answered, have a drink. And she quickly lowered her jug from her shoulders and gave him a drink. Let's see. Um, when she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too, until they had enough to drink. She had quickly emptied. I actually say that right there because that just came to me. You know, what we talked about yesterday that a prophetic word come in the past for your spouse, that God can give you something specifically about your spouse. And as I was just reading this, the Lord just highlighted me. He can give you a specific word about your spouse that you will know beyond a shadow of doubt that this person is the one. Mm -hmm. The Lord did that for me when he said a musical instrument about you playing the piano, about you in worship, and then finding out later on as we started to talk and get to know each other more. That I find out later on, I'm like, she knows how to play music. You know how to play keys? You know how to sing? I think it was, I was it. Uh, it was young adults night. It was one time I was watching. I was working sound, <laughs> and then I remember you had started singing, and then you started on the keys, and then you went to the guitar, and then I was like, what the heck? I was like, did she just go from singing to the keyboard to the guitar? And I'm like. This one was talented. And I'm like, how the heck did she like know all three of them? I never knew that until that day. And then. That's funny. Yeah, I didn't know that at that moment. But it was at that moment. 
I was like, oh, wow. And then it was the word, like a desire of the heart fulfilled. Exactly. Yeah. And as I was watching, I'm like, man, that word came back to me. This, this, this. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. So God will give you a word specifically for your spouse that you will know exactly, exactly who it is. You'll know exactly when you meet that person. Mm -hmm. So just want to throw that in there. Amen. Let's see. Verse 19. When she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too until they have had enough to drink. So she quickly emptied her jug into the watering trough and she came back and came and ran back to the well to draw water for all his camels. So the servant watched her in silence, wondering whether or not the Lord had given him success in his mission. Then at last, when the camels had finished drinking, he took out a gold ring with her gold ring for her nose and large gold bracelets for her wrists. Uh, let's see. Man, it's a lengthy passage. <laughs> Verse 23. Whose daughter are you, he asked. And please tell me, would your father have any room to put us up for the night? I'm the daughter of Bethuel, she replied. My grandparents are Nahor and Milka. Yes, we have plenty of straw and feed for the camels, and we have room for the guests. The man bowed low and worshipped the Lord. Praise the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, he said. The Lord has shown unfailing love and faithfulness to my master. For he has led me straight to my master's relatives. The young woman ran home to tell her family everything that had happened. Now, Rebecca had a brother named Laban who ran out to meet him. The man at the spring. Now, Rebecca had a brother named Laban who ran out to meet the man at the spring. He had seen the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrist and had heard Rebecca tell the man, tell the tell what the man had said. So he rushed out to the spring where the man was still standing beside his camels. Laban said to him, come and stay with us. You who are blessed by the Lord. Why are you standing here outside the town when I have room all ready for you and a place prepared for your camels? Number three, your family will see the visible blessing of God mm -hmm. and experience it. Your family will see the visible blessing of God and experience it. Verse 30 right there. She had put the, the, the nose ring in and the gold bracelets, not fake gold, the gold bracelets on her wrist. And what was the first thing Laban said? He looked down. He seen the nose ring in her ears. He seen the bracelets on her arm. He was like, where the heck did that come from? You were going out to get water, but you came back decked out in gold. I'm telling you, there are gifts, expensive gifts that God will give to you as a married couple mm -hmm. because he delights in showing mercy. He delights in showing off the goodness of God of, to his people and through his people for your family to see it, for your loved ones to see it. How many times have like, your family members, your parents, your, your, your grandparents, my family members have asked us, well, how'd that happen? Where'd that mm -hmm. come from? And in other people's lives who can testify, they've told me multiple times, yeah, their family asks, how do we get this car? How do we get this house? Where did this come from? Where did that come from? It's the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to us either. Yeah. Most of the time I'm like, you know, I actually don't know. Yeah. I don't know how we got that. And then after you tell the story to people mm -hmm. and then you explain it to your family member and to your loved one, everyone's just kind of like, what the heck? I remember explaining to your grandparents and it, it, it's like, oh, wow, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Explaining it to my mom. She was like, what? Oh, wow. How did that happen? When did that happen? How did you get that? Mm -hmm. Because it's the goodness of God. It's, it's the blessing of God that happens when you are in covenant with God. That your entire family's decked out. And you don't have to go to some uh, thrift store or some third. And if you do, there's nothing wrong with that. But you don't have to. You can start out that way. But you, don't, you will never end that way when you follow after God. Mm -hmm. You may start out going to thrift stores. You may start out secondhand. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't feel bad about it. And don't beat yourself up about it. And don't be condemned about it. It's happened before. Me and my wife have got stuff from there before. I still have stuff from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But don't beat yourself up about it. But God didn't just entail for you to stay there secondhand and getting stuff. Oh, uh, he's getting that there and we're just going to get that there. And I know this is used, but we can clean that up. No, God wants you to have the best. You probably won't hear that on like 50 other live streams tonight. You'll probably hear something else about, oh, we, we all sin. We all fall short, everybody. We all fall short and or some whack, weird doctrine, whatever. I can't even think of anything right now. But God delights in blessing his people so much so that even your family sees of the blessing and partakes of the blessing too. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to jump ahead, but 
for myself for this one. Verse 53 says, actually, my lovely wife. Would you mind reading it? 53? 53. Why do you keep turning your mic on? Because it keeps like echoing. Oh, my bad. 53. Okay, then he brought out silver and gold jewelry and clothing and presented them to Rebecca. He also gave expensive presents to her brother and mother. Right there. He gave expensive gifts to her brother and mother. I'm telling you, from this day forward, if you have never given expensive gifts to your family member, you will be the first one in your family to do so. Amen. Because it is scriptural, and God delights in showing mercy. God delights in showing off. God delights in just making the devil so mad by just pouring out his blessing upon his people. And that's what he's going to do for you. And that's what he's, gonna, he's doing for us, and that's what he's going to do for you. You're going to see a completely different end of 2023 than however it was before. It's going to be completely different. You're going to see it by December 31st. I tell you that. I promise you that. By December 31st, it's going to be completely different. And if you haven't seen it, you're going to be like, well, why didn't I see it? Because you didn't grab a hold of it. Because it's the word of God. And God says, my word doesn't return void. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, you're going to see it in our lives. And we're walking in it. And we're going to walk in it even more. And you're going to walk in it with us. Because you're an ambassador of Christ. Amen. Number three. Your family will see the visible blessing of God. The servant came along. He gave her uh, the gold ring and the gold bracelets and then turned around and said, oh, here, here's some for your brother. Here's some for your mother. Number four, people working for you. That's a big one. How many people do you actually hear say that or will say that? Mm -hmm. People will work for you, whether you're in business, whether you're in ministry, uh, uh, government, have your own uh, a doctor, whatever it may be. Don't limit God. God is is unlimited, and His su supply He has for you is unlimited. Mm -hmm. God can have people work for you. Let's see. Verse, I'll pick up verse fifty nine. So they said goodbye to Rebecca and sent her away with Abraham's servant, his men, the women who had been Rebecca's childhood nurse, went along with her. Her childhood nurse went along with her. Think about the servant, the one who was sent out. The servant wasn't just the only one who went. How, do you, how, do you, how does one servant carry 10 camels? How does he bring 10 camels along by himself? There may be one strong uh, camel herder, but he wasn't. It actually says right here in the Bible that the fact that the men with them. I'll read it. Let's see. Verse 32. So the man went home with Laban and Laban unloaded the camels gave him straw for the, their bedding, fed them, and provided, provided water for the man and the camel drivers to wash their feet. Then food was served, but Abraham's servant said, I don't want to eat until I have told you why I have come. Mm -hmm. Servants, Abraham was very rich, a very rich man. And then he had 300 trained servants in his household before Abraham, before Isaac came along, you want to talk about like exceedingly blessed by God. He left where he was with 300 trained servants. And then he, he I'm pretty sure he still had more servants even after he left. Because even after he left Egypt, they said he, he they, they blessed, they sent him out because he was too great to be touched. His God had, had richly blessed him. And that's how you are. You can have people working for you. You can have people working for you at your, at your ministry. I'm telling you, even in this ministry, before it's all said and done, we'll have people working for us full time, paying them well. You should desire that. You should desire to be the person who's not just working for someone else. You should be desi desiring the person who says, you know what? I'm going to be like Abraham and I'm going to leave an inheritance to my children's children. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the one who owns the business. I'm going to be the one who owns the, the, the food shop. Stop, stop putting yourself under Egyptian rulers and be a child of God. Stop putting yourself in a position where you're always the one looking. I'm going to fill out. There's nothing wrong. If you need it, you had to get a job, get a job. That's fine. But at the end of the day, you shouldn't always just be looking from job to job to job to job. God wants to give you something to do. God never designed one of his people to just always be working underneath someone else's, especially someone, some, someone unsafe, working underneath there. If you are, there's nothing wrong with that. But eventually, get your own. Climb to the top. Get to the top of the top to where you're the one in control, where you're the one who can sit there and say, you know what? In this company, I actually want to turn it to Sundays. 
Sundays, are, this business is closed. Sundays, we're actually doing this. Sundays is the day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is a Christian business now. This is a Christian company now. And you can do it. God can do it through you. Look at Chick-fil-A. Look at Hobby Lobby. Look at all these places. There were men of God who, who men whose heart was for the Lord. J.C. Penney, whose heart was for the Lord. They began to tithe. They began to, to, to give Sundays to the Lord. Begin to honor the Lord in their giving and in their business and in their home. And look how their business is still running. How still to this day, their families are blessed. Their children are blessed. They don't have to work for someone else. They're not giving, uh, they're not getting a, a, a pension. They're not getting uh, something sent out from the government for them every, every month, $600, $1,200. $1, they're not getting food stamps. They're actually the one who are helping people get jobs so they don't have to get food stamps. So they don't have to be a slave to the government. And it's the same way that it will work for you and it is going to continue to work for you as long as you believe the word of God. Amen. So, let's see. Number five. You got anything to say on the last one? Mm -hmm. Nothing about people working for you? I mean, I have a lot of people working for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number five. Let's see. Dang, I didn't put the scripture for that one. It's all good. Number five, as I keep reading. I am Abraham's servant, he explained. And the Lord has greatly blessed my master. He has become a wealthy man. I want you to write that in the comment section. I am a wealthy either man or woman. I am a wealthy man. I am a wealthy woman. Write that in the comment section. If God did it for Abraham, God will do it for you. If God did it for Isaac, he'll do it for you. And if God did it for Jacob, he'll do it for you. He does not change. I am a wealthy man. You are a wealthy man. You are a wealthy woman. Stop saying I am broke. Stop saying I can't afford that. Stop saying it's hard uh, for us now um, in this day and age. Stop, stop repeating what everyone else is repeating because you will get what everyone else gets. Plain and simple. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Change what you're hearing. Change what you're seeing. And you'll change what you're seeing by what you're saying. Yeah. You'll always change what you see by what you say. But if you're always talking negative, well, it's flu season. Well, it's around that time of the month. Allergies kick in for me. Well, I, it just hasn't been the same since this happened. It hasn't been the same since. And there's people who are on repeat consistently over and over again and they don't even know it it's like when a computer goes into autopilot they just like they just tap out they have a conversation with you oh yeah my day's going really good everything's going really great everything's awesome and then why am i staring at the screen so intently like that my gosh i don't know it's <laughs> like i'm staring at my own soul gosh anywho stop saying that i got distracted uh Stop saying it. Stop repeating what everyone else in the world is saying. That's not you. Mm -hmm. Stop saying that. I, I, it's broke. I got to wait till I get paid. Why? Why? Why do you, where in the Bible does it say I have to wait till I get paid to do something? Please explain that to me. Can someone explain it to me? Where is, where does it say in the next two weeks you're going to get paid? Why? And also, why is that the only source in your life? Mm -hmm. Why is it? Do you think God wanted that way? Do you think God wanted to where you're only just getting Getting a paycheck, living life. Getting a paycheck, living life. Getting a paycheck, living life. You know, I heard earlier that there are people who can be, who can have a lot of money but have no influence and no one knows about them. And there are people like that. And then there are also people who just live their life, a mundane life. They pay their bills. They get their, their paycheck every two weeks. They go home and they're just okay existing. And you can't push them out of that bubble. You can't help them get out of that bubble. They're content staying there. They're content being a background player in a video game. That's all. They're, they're content doing it. They just like live life, walk in the street in the background. Me and my wife play video games together. There's, there's characters like that in the video game. They just walk along. And you're just like, what the heck are you even doing? And that's how some people are. Pay bills, go home, go to church. Pay bills, go home, go to church. And then they may find something interactive to do. Have you seen the sport game? Have you seen what it said on the news? Stop being that person. That's not who you are. You're created in Christ Jesus to do good things for God. That's not who you are. You are a wealthy woman. You are a wealthy man. And it says it right here, what Abraham, 
was rich then. So if someone comes along and says, yes, Abraham was rich, but you know, that was the Old Testament. Well, God did that for him. Yes, we're spiritually rich. How can you be spiritually rich and then it not manifest itself on the outside for, for it to be seen? Jesus walked in a robe that they said they, they, tore, they, they, they gambled for his robe. They, they shot dice. They gambled to, for his robe because of how expensive it was, because the fabric of it, that it was, it was one solid piece handcrafted. You talk about expensive, you say, well, well, yeah, well, Jesus really didn't have anywhere. He just, he just slept anywhere. Funny how someone who slept anywhere did, just slept anywhere, but he had a boat for 12 disciples, including himself. Mm -hmm. Funny how someone, they, they, they thought when, he, when it came to Judas that he was going to go give money to the poor because he did it often. How do you give money to the poor often? How do you have a treasure and then steals from the treasure, but can't even steal enough because he, it just kept coming in? How do you have seven women follow you around giving into your ministry? That doesn't sound like a poor man to me. So whether you want to go Old Testament, you want to go New Testament. Like, don't, don't, don't stand for it. Don't stand for it. You're a wealthy person in Amen. Jesus' name. Would you mind reading verse 36 to mm, 42? 36, 3. 42. Actually. Yeah. Of 24. Mm -hmm. When Sarah, my master's wife, was very old, she gave birth to my master's son. And my master has given him everything he owns. And my master made him an oath. He said, do not allow my son to marry one of these local Canaanite women. Go instead to my father's house, to my relatives, and find a wife there for my son. Right. But I, I'll stop you right there. Okay. Sorry, I, I said a little further. Actually, no, you can keep going. But I said to my master, what if I can't find a young woman who is willing to go back with me? He responded... The Lord in whose presence I have lived will send his angel with you mm. and will make your mission successful. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you must find a wife for my son and from among my relatives, from my father's family. Then you will have fulfilled your obligation. But if you go to my relatives and they refuse to let her go with you, you will be free from my oath. Amen. Number six, children. God will give you children. With the spouse, God will give you children. You know all the women who were of, uh, let me put, how do I put, four, of our forefathers were all barren. They all needed some type of miracle. Hmm. Sarah, Rebecca, even on, on down the line, barrenness. But then what did God do? Turn it around. So I can turn your barrenness around and I can actually make you give birth. Sarah in her old age. Uh, Rebecca giving birth to, to twins. Think yeah. about that that God would turn it around for their good, just like that. So even if you say with, with your body, and, and the doctors may have said, oh, well, my, my body, can't, I can't have children because this with my ovaries, or, or this happened when I was younger. From this day forth, you will be able to bear fruit. You will be able to have children because it is unscriptural not for you to have children. Mm -hmm. And you'll have healthy children. Amen. You won't have children that come out with problems. Mm -hmm. You won't have children, well, they have to keep going to the doctor every two weeks till we figure out what this thing is. Absolutely not. You tell the devil, devil, you have no place in my house and you will not touch my children. And if you have children now, tell, get, kick his ugly butt out of your house. It's covenant. You are in covenant with God and God will fight for you just as God fought for Abraham. And when they, when they went to go take Sarah, you know, that's crazy that as I was reading, uh, it was like a while ago, that, that Abraham was scared to tell them that Sarah was his sister, was his wife, but he told him it was his sister. Mm -hmm. Did you know that God had plagued the entire uh, town of those people for just coming along? He said, don't touch that woman. Let her go. That, that woman doesn't belong to you. That's his wife. That belongs to him. That God, you think God won't do the same thing for you? He won't, allow, he won't allow sickness and disease to come on you. He won't allow uh, seizures. He won't allow cancer. He won't allow of any man-made diseases, any flu, any virus. The Bible says that he will keep it, Psalms 91, that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. 
He will keep the sickness away from you. No plague shall come nigh your dwelling. From this day forth, wherever you are, lift your hands. I command in Jesus' name, any plague, any sickness and disease that's come near your household is evicted now in Jesus' name. It's not allowed to touch you. It's not allowed to touch your children. It's not allowed to touch your home. Be free in Jesus' name and remain free from this day forth in Jesus' name. And go your way and pray for other people for them to get healed in Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. Children. God delights in children. Mm -hmm. How many testimonies have we heard? Man, I wish I had that testimony. But the story of Bishop David Oyedepo, when that couple, they, they kept trying. They were like in their 40s, in their 50s. I think they were in their 50s. We were trying to have children, but they couldn't. And the doctors told him it was impossible because I think he said the woman didn't even have a womb. It was like, you, can't even, you don't even have children because you don't have a womb, ma'am. But you know what happened? That they prayed, they sowed seed, and they stood on the word of God given by Bishop David Oyedepo, one of the largest, the largest churches in the world. Look him up, Bishop David Oyedepo, and, and watch the testimonies. Watch the stories of people who come. <laughs> church, church service is so large that people are giving birth in church, like in the hundreds. And you mean to tell me that choir, 55, I think it was like 55,000 of people mm -hmm. in, their, in their choir service, 800 people born, uh, babies born. And you mean to tell me God's not on the move just because you haven't seen it in America? You're going to see it in America before it's all said and done. America is going to have some of the most super mega churches. And you mean to tell me that, that these people had this testimony, that the fact that the woman was barren, couldn't have a child, they prayed, they gave God honored their, their prayers. God honored their seat. And they said they came and returned back. And, and they went to the doctor and they said they don't even know how it was possible. Not only was she pregnant with one, but she was pregnant with two. She had twins and gave birth to two beautiful babies. And still to this day, the woman has those children. And that testimony is there on the internet. I know my wife is looking for it right now, but gave birth to, to beautiful babies. But if we find it, we'll put it out later. But that's amazing. That's the God we serve. You mean to tell me that just because you may have been uh, promiscuous in the past or you may have did something in the past, that, that that limits you, that limits God for doing something for you, for God being there for you? God wanted you to have children? Why would he tell Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply? Mm -hmm. It would be completely unscriptural. It wouldn't, even, it wouldn't even be righteous. So why would God allow Adam and Eve to do it but then not let you do it? And then not only on top of that, your children are going to go out and wild out and serve the devil. You'll have children who will worshipfully and fearfully and wonderfully serve the Lord and love the Lord with the, all their heart. You will have those children. And some of you have children now. I know uh, Miss Anne Marie, if she's watching still, I think she's still watching. I can't even look at the screen. But Anne Marie, when she, she her daughter in college now, in uh, ORU, mm -hmm. killing it, having a wonderful time there, in the call of God on her life. And you mean to tell me that, that God can't do it for you? God won't do it for your family? And he'll, he'll do it for you. He'll do it even just to be a sign and a wonder. Mm -hmm. That's how good he is. That's how good he is, yeah. the God that we serve. Children. And the Bible says, Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. So think about that. You being a wealthy person will then turn the wealth over to your children and then to your children's children. That's generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Wealth that you can sit there and you say, well, why is he talking about money so much tonight? Because it needs to be hit on. Because it needs to be said. Because it needs to be taught about. Because people have been robbed for too long in the body of Christ. People have seen miracles and signs and wonders and healings. But then when it comes to finances, people just close their ears off. And I don't want to hear it. And if you don't, then God will raise up a sinner. And they'll get saved. And then they'll believe God. And they'll account it unto him. And God will account it unto them for righteousness. And then God will work through their life. But don't let it happen. Don't let it be a, another someone. Someone else God has to raise up to do it. You be the one God does it through. So allow, receive the word of God today. Allow the blessing of God 
to carry on from you to your children and to your children's children. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Talk about blessing that carries on for, for years. I heard one, of my, one man of God said, he said, if you actually look it up about a blessing that goes from your children's children, that, that type of wealth would have to be for 120. Think about the a man's lifespan was, they say it was only supposed to be for 120 years. Not they say, but the word of God, 120 years. So you think about that. There, there will be wealth made available from going from 120 to a 240, if you think about that. 240. 240 mm -hmm. years. That type of wealth. And if actually you look it up, that's zeros upon zeros upon zeros upon zeros that God has laid and entrusted into your family, into our family into everyone's family and all you have to do is be a partaker and say God if you can use anyone Lord use me if you can if you can touch anyone's family Lord touch my family use my family make us a sign and wonder mm -hmm. make it that the nations hear about our family make it that that around the world that even to this day people know the name of David King David and of Solomon his son the richest in the Bible according to the Bible that Solomon the richest man who ever lived that people from Queen, uh, Queen Sheba came from afar to come see the wealth. Mm -hmm. That not only that what he inherited from his father, but what the Lord had blessed him for serving the Lord. And it's going to be the same way for you and for your children because you serve the Lord. Amen. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm happy to see it happen. And I'm happy to see it happen in everyone's life who's tuning in tonight. And uh, number seven. Joyful marriage. A joyful marriage. You can have the children. You can have the finances. You can have the land. But you must have a joyful marriage. You must have a marriage that brings comfort and joy. Joy. The Bible says the kingdom of God is, is made up of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Mm -hmm. Right standing with God, a peaceful home, and joy. Where laughter is in your house and not screaming. Where shouts of joy and not shouts of anger. Where there's not death threats, but there's love and affection shared between mom and dad. Between husband and wife. Between mom and children and dad and children. You can have that. That's your portion. That's your portion even for your marriage. That, that you may not even desire to have children yet. It may not, but, but you want to go into marriage. You can have a joyful marriage. Your marriage doesn't have to be like anyone else's marriage that you've seen before. God never entitled marriage to be a stressful problem. It actually says in 1 Corinthians 7 that, that we were called to dwell in peace. You think about that. You were called to dwell in peace. So where would be the greatest place for peace to be at? In our household. Mm -hmm. Like in our marriage. Yeah. Like... Once this comes alive to you, then you'll start to see, no, we don't have to have problems like everybody else has in the world. We don't have to, like, deal with the problems everyone else has to deal with. We can mm -hmm. actually be different. And yeah. we are different. Amen. So, finishing off, let's see. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick up. Keep reading. So today, verse 42, when I came to the spring, I prayed this prayer, Lord, O Lord God, give, O Lord God of my master Abraham, please give me success on my mission, on this mission. See, I'm standing here beside this spring. This is my request. When a young woman comes to draw water, I will say to her, please give me a little drink of water from your jug. If she says yes, have a drink. And I will draw water for your camels too. Let her be the one you have selected to be the wife of my master's son. Before I had finished praying in my heart, I saw Rebecca coming out of her water jug. Coming out with her water jug. Coming out her, of the water coming jug. Coming out with her water jug on her shoulder. She went down the spring. Went down the spring and drew water. So I said to her, please give me a drink. She clicked quickly lowered her jug from her shoulder and said, yes, I have it. Yes, have a drink and I will water your camels too. 
skipping down to, let's see, verse 50. Then Laban and Bethuel replied, the Lord has obviously brought you here, so there is nothing we can say. Here is Rebekah, take her and go. Yes, let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has directed. When Abraham's servant heard their answer, he bowed down to the ground and worshiped the Lord. Then he brought out silver and gold, jewelry and clothing, and presented them to Rebekah. He also gave expensive presents to her brother and mother. Then they ate their meal, and the servant and the men with them stayed there overnight. Skipping down, let's see. Verse 59. So they said goodbye to Rebekah and sent her away with Abraham's servant and his men. The woman who had been Rebekah's childhood nurse went along with her. They gave her this blessing as she parted. Our sister, may you become the mother of many millions. Look at that. What type of blessing is that? May you become the mother of many millions. May your descendants be strong and conquer the cities of your enemies. That's a blessing. Then Rebekah and her servant girls mounted the camels and followed the man. So Abraham's servant took Rebekah and went on his way. I'll give you the word of the Lord. The camels are coming. The camels are coming into your house because you receive this word today. That the Lord has things in store for your family. Things in store for your household. He has land for you. He has expensive gifts for you. He has property for you. He has children for you. He has generational wealth laid up for you. He has a joyful marriage laid up for you. And all you have to do from this day forth is say, God, I receive it as mine. I receive what the word of God says. I receive what Noah and Chloe say and, and, and them saying your word. I receive what the word of God says because that's your portion. And you have to believe it. You have to say for yourself, that, I'm taking that. That's mine. If, anyone, if no one else wants to take it, I'm taking it. That is mine. I'm going to finish up. Verse 66. Actually, no. Verse 62. Meanwhile, Isaac, whose home was in the gift, had returned from Ber Roy one evening as he was walking. And meditating in the fields, he looked up and saw the camels coming. The camels are coming. When Rebekah looked up and saw Isaac, she quickly dismounted her camel. Who is this man walking through the fields to meet us? She was scoping. Mm -hmm. She asked the servant and he replied, it's my master. So Rebekah covered her face with her veil. Then the servant told Isaac everything he had done. And Isaac brought Rebekah into his mother's tent, and she became his wife. He loved her deeply. She was special. She was a special comfort to him after the death of his mother. Your spouse will be a special comfort to you from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have went through before today, today is a new day. Today, things turn around for you. And you may be married, and you're hearing this message. And it just may be a refresher to you. Today, things are turning around for you. Today, the camels are coming to you. Today, joy and comfort is returning to your household. It's returning to your marriage. You won't spend one more day crying tears of agony and pain. And what are we going to do to make it? Uh, what are we going to do now? Holding your head stressed out, crying and trying to figure out, God, what do we do at this moment? We're about to go through a divorce. We're going through a hard time. The camels are coming to your household. God is stepping in on your behalf today. He is stepping in. Mm -hmm. And he is going to work everything out for your good. But you have to let him. You have to want to let him. And if you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, and if you listen to this message and you say, I, I, I don't know. I don't know God. I don't know this God you're talking about. I don't know Jesus. I want to I say a big shout out to the people watching from Pakistan who write to us and let us know. The people in the United Kingdom, God loves you so much. The people who watch in Hawaii, God loves you so much. We love you. And God loves you so much. But you must be saved. Your, you and your household must be saved, like the Bible says in the book of Acts. You must be saved. Repent and turn from your sin. You, I can list off all these blessings and all these things that God made available to Abraham. But if you are not saved, if you are not in Christ Jesus, you won't even taste them. 
You won't even experience them. You'll see other people taste them, but you'll never experience them for yourself. And if that's you and you need to make things right between you and God, put your head on the pillow tonight and be a complete peace in knowing that you made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. I want you to say this prayer with me. Believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth. If it's you and your household, grab hands. If it's you and your wife, grab hands. You and your husband, grab hands. If they're asleep, shake them out of their sleep and wake them up. Grab your kids' hands. Have them pray this prayer with you. And believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth. Say this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus. For dying on the cross. For dying on the cross. For me. For me. And my household. And my household. Forgive me. Forgive me. Of my sin. Of my sin. And I ask you. And I ask you. Fill me now. Fill me now. With, with the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit. And give me the power. And give me the power. To live for you. To live for you. All the days. All the days. Of my life. Of my life. I will serve you. I will serve you. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Is the Son of God. Is the Son of God. And my God. Lord and Savior. And my Lord and Savior. And I will not turn back. And I will not turn back. Into the world. Into the world. Amen. Amen. And if you said that prayer, congratulations. You have said the most important prayer that you will ever pray in your entire life, receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Give yourself a round of applause. You should be shouting for joy because in heaven right now, they're shouting for joy. They are rejoicing right now because you have entered into the kingdom of God. You have made things right. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You should be shocked because we're thankful. We're happy that you said that prayer. Mm -hmm. We're happy that you tuned into this broadcast and you're listening in or you're watching or, or people going back on podcasts and you're listening in. Mm -hmm. You made the greatest decision of your life. And I'm telling you, God's going to turn everything around from this day forth. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. And he's going to do it for you. Amen. Amen. All things are new. All things are new. Brand new. And if that's you, I want you to write to us. Mm -hmm. Reach out to us. DM us. Find us on Instagram, Facebook. I'll send you a, if you do, I mean, we, I just, before, um, we, we got on live, um, I went to go scroll through Metro cool and I saw a bunch of comments on old reels that we did. People saying, I prayed that prayer. Thank you. Awesome. I prayed that prayer in Jesus mighty name, yeah. you know, so people are getting saved and regardless of, you know, we have two people on Facebook right now. But it's the people that tune in after. It's the people that come, you know, behind yeah. and then stumble across this broadcast or stumble across our podcast. And it makes it so worth it. It makes it 110% worth it because there's people getting saved. Exactly. You know, and that's the desire of our heart is not just to help, you know, our brothers and sisters in Christ, but also that many, many people would come to be saved. Exactly. That they must be saved before it's eternally too late. Mm -hmm. And this gospel has to get preached and it has to go forth. And people have to know. Not only does the gospel have to get preached, but people have to know the full counsel of God's word. And those tuning in. And I'm so thankful to even hear that because I've seen some of those people, uh, some of those comments before. But I haven't went through all of them. Mm -hmm. I haven't went we through all the We still have to send out, I mean, gifts. And please put your, if you do fill out that link, put your please. address or your email because there's people there's some people in hawaii that i can't even send gifts out to because i don't have their address i don't even have an email yeah so and, and just give us your email at mm -hmm. that like we're probably we'll nowhere anywhere near you at all so yeah it's not like i'm gonna show up at your door hey brother or sister I just want to come pray for you no like put give us your email mm -hmm. address at least so that we know like where are we sending where we are sending something to like give us a chance i don't want to go Lock my way, myself away in the closet and pray to the Holy Ghost and yeah. try to figure out what your email or what your address is. So, yes, help us out. Send the information. Mm -hmm. Let us know so we can send something out to you. Yeah, and if you want to be a part of that, you want to be a part of sending out gifts. You want to be a part of everything that we're doing here at Ambassador Global. Like, we're gonna we're gonna talk about giving for a minute because it's so so important. Not just because this ministry. Forget about, you know. Anyways, sow seed into good ground, a ministry that's doing something, a ministry that's producing something so it can produce in your life. Your seed should be going somewhere that's actually winning souls. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. If you are going to a church, if you're going to uh, a part of a ministry, whatever it is, and they're not winning souls, they're not actively going out and trying to reach the lost, they're not actively trying to see the word of God go forth, but yet they're so busy concerned of their own holy huddles, Sow seed into this ministry. We are endeavoring to go out and reach the lost. This isn't the only thing we're going to be doing. We're actually going to be doing Ambassador Global Nights. We're mm -hmm. actually going to be going into New Hampshire, into we Manchester, have... into Bedford, yeah. into Nashua, into all those other towns. And we're going to be doing meetings there. 
because we, if we don't go, they mm -hmm. will die. But you are going to be a part of it. And you get to be a part of it. You get mm -hmm. to, to be Just a part of people this, getting touched by the power of God. This broadcast, commenting, engaging with us, it's pushing it out so other people can see it, so they can hear you know, this message. And just because it's on marriage, you would be amazed at how many unsaved people will tune into a Christian broadcast about marriage. Yeah, our very first podcast we did about marriage. Like skyrocketed mm -hmm. upon hundreds Across upon thousands nations nations places that mm -hmm. hundreds of views. To be honest with you, some of them I didn't even know existed. But mm -hmm. like hundreds of nations, like hundreds of people in multiple different nations were listening to the broadcast, tuning in because it was about merit. So do you think that this broadcast was that you're actually a part of now is not actually going to go reach and touch someone else's life? That's why we mm -hmm. give an altar call at the end. That's why we challenge people to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. So even now, sow seed into a ministry that's doing something. Sow seed in somewhere that you know is going to produce back a hundredfold harvest. That's going to produce back fruit into your life. That's going to open up, like the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9, make you, a, make you generous on the inside and then also make you generous on the outside. God desires to get seed in your hand and to make you fruitful so that your life, even through your life, like the word of God says, to make you wealthy. You know, most people won't say that. Well, yeah, you'll just be blessed. No, God desires to make you rich. God desires to increase you. That's how seed time and harvest works. God mm -hmm. takes the seed. He multiplies the seed and has it come back to you. And we're actually going for it. The vision that we have for this ministry of going forth and doing these meetings and, and going and actively getting a building now mm -hmm. as we speak, getting the building, getting, getting the lights, getting a camera, looking for the, the sound system and everything. We're actively doing that now. Mm -hmm. We're not just sitting on our, our hands and feet. We're actively going out. And before it's all said and done this fall, we're actually going to be, I would say by October, we're mm -hmm. actively going and we're going to get people saved. We're actively going and we're going to do these meetings. It's going to be not going to be some one night event and then, mm -hmm. oh, wasn't that nice? No, we're going to keep smacking it and keep smacking it. So partner with us. Be a part with us. Come along with us and watch the people in the Northeast get saved. Watch the people around the world get saved. How would it be when you stand before God and then you hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, and you see the souls that are accounted unto you because you sold into a ministry that was actively winning souls. One man souls, another man waters, but the Bible says it's God who gives the increase. Mm -hmm. So be a part of that. That's so amazing that even if you think about Dr. Lester Summerall and Feed the Hungry ministry mm -hmm. is still making impact today. He has gone home to be with the Lord. And that's what we plan to do even in this ministry. Still, even after the rapture, after we go home to be with the Lord, this ministry is still going to keep going. Still going to be going after winning souls. Still actively going to be going out and, and saving the loss and providing homes and providing food and providing a shelter, and providing jobs. Still going after it. We ain't drawing back. We're actually going to keep expanding and growing more. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be... Uh, I mean, I have no problem. Like, I feel fine about saying it but we are in the process of getting a building back in manchester yeah you know that's the area that the lord has put put in our spirit so strong um so we're we're in the process speaking to them figuring out you know what what the cost is going to be and not even that but it's funny because you would think in the process of getting a building you'd be like so focused on the financials but all i can think about is how many people we can stick in the conference room of this building and how much, you know, I'm like, how many people can, I was like, we can stick a lot of people in this conference room. We can set up a tent. I mean, like, I have been thinking every which way possible that we can hit the neighborhood. There's apartment buildings on both sides. There's a school right next to it. There's a clinic right next to it. So we are gonna hit the city of Manchester so, so, so hard for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's gonna be great. So if you wanna be a part of that, <laughs> ways to give, I've already thrown them up on the screen. And yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be so good. New so England has been called, you know, a dry area. It's been called it's been labeled all of these things, but that's not true. The people of New England are hungry. We've done meetings there. We've seen the young people are so hungry. They're asking for multiple nights. They said one night's not enough. Can we you do more, more nights? nights? We need multiple nights. They need more. They're asking, asking, when are we coming back? When are you guys coming back? When are you guys doing meetings again? Because they they their people are hungry. Mm -hmm. People are thirsty. For the things of God, people are thirsty, and they they want they're they are looking anywhere actively now. Now is like the Bible says that the harvest is white. Now there are people actively 
where it was where people we were going out and trying to find people oh, we, mm-hmm. we got to get them people are now turning back and trying to figure out what's going on in droves what, what coming to the church like, what, so. what, what's going on with, with this what's going on with this sign mm-hmm. of the time what, is, is Jesus really coming back is this really going to happen this is the perfect hour to be a part of and I, I'm happy to be a part of my wife is happy to be a part of that, that building we just looked at today is amazing mm-hmm. and beautiful and we looked online and we, we spoke to the woman and uh, she's going to send out some more information over to me. But I'm telling you, we're going to have pictures soon when we get the information. But I'm telling you, we're going to stick as many people in there as we possibly can. Ooh. And we're going to like smack it. We're going to smack Manchester. Like, no, but smack it. We're going to like soul winning. And if you want to be a part of it, if you're in New Hampshire, write to us, let us know. Soul winning, uh, flyering. At whatever it is, you, you want to help catch, you want to be help be, uh, take names, whatever it is. We're going to be doing giveaways. We're going to do uh, back to school events. We're going to do fall events. We're going to do whatever it is. All these events that we have planned, we're going to just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Because people, people gonna, need it. We're really going to treat, we weren't even planning on announcing any of this. But we're going to treat New Hampshire and specifically Manchester, Bedford area like it's a nation, you know, and just do Holy Ghost meeting after Holy Ghost meeting after Holy Ghost meeting, get people under the anointing, get them set free from drugs, from alcohol, from sin. They're going to be broken out of poverty. They're gonna, it's going to be great. Broken it's going to be poverty, powerful. Broken out of sickness and disease. Broken out of addiction. Mm-hmm. Do you think that just what you see where you are is the only place? It's not. The young people generation up there, it's it's ridiculous. There's people there's young people who are homeless, orphans. They need a family. They need a home. They need the word of God. They need to know. There's people who uh still to this day, still to this day, are afraid to come out of their house. Mm-hmm. Scared. Their church is shut down. They have nowhere to go to hear the word of God preached to them. They have no one to turn to, to actually know well, what's going on. So they're actively looking, actively searching. Yeah. And we'd love for you to be a part of that. And Marie said New Hampshire's on fire. Because it is. All of New England. Yeah. I'm done with these. Oh, people are hungry. People just aren't. People no. are hungry. People are hungry. People want the move of God. And the Lord wants to move. He wants to move. He desires to move. The meetings that we have up there. How many young people do you see just out underneath the power of God, crying, laughter, full of joy, coming back with testimonies? You know, when you said this, when this happened, when that happened, did you know this, this, and this? People have came to me after services. Did you know that you you said this, this, and this? Mm -hmm. That I was thinking that exact thought? They need to see the gifts of the Spirit manifested today. Even out of what I was reading, Genesis chapter 24, that is the example Of the Holy Spirit giving gifts to the body of Christ. Those gifts were given to her. And then now those gifts are given to the church. And now the people of the world have to see those gifts that that God has given to us as his church. Demonstrated out to the people in New Hampshire. The people in New England. They have to see it. They have to encounter it. They have to experience it. If not, then what? What, what? What is going to happen then afterwards? Are we going to allow a repeat of what happened several years ago come back around? Absolutely not. We're standing up and we're saying, hell no, it's not happening again. And hell no, we're not going to let our generation die. We're actually going to see them get saved and get filled with the Holy Ghost and, and, and just start praising God and coming out of obscurity and being set in a high place, watching what the word of God does in these people's life. So it's going to be good. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. So We weren't planning on announcing any of that, but... I wasn't planning on announcing it, but I was, I was going to give it a little bit more time, but I just feel like just mm-hmm. announce it. Just go, just go for it right now. Let them in. Let people in and let them know. This is what's going on. This is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. We're coming back up and we're bringing the fire of God to New Hampshire, to the people in New Hampshire, and it's going to be great. I love it. Mm-hmm. And it's going to grow more. We're going to start broadcasting. We're... That's what, yeah, predominantly the building will be for broadcasting. It'll be for an office so we can actually have a place to put everything that we send out to people, Bibles, um, everything. Workers. 
we have yeah. people volunteering. I mean, we have we already have volunteers. Yeah. Already, so it'll be nice to have one place where we can all come together. You know, meet, get work done together. We're not working remote through laptops and whatever. So. We can see face to face. Yeah. But. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be awesome. Well, for all those who sow tonight and sow later on, I'm gonna pray for you, pray for your seed, and ask God to bless it and increase it. So, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name for every person willing to sow tonight. You said the willing and the obedient shall eat the good of the land. I thank you for every person who sowed seed tonight. I thank you for every person who's a part of this ministry and every person who's tuned into this broadcast. I thank you that the seed that they sow, Lord, will open up doors for them, will open up favor for them. And that, Lord, I thank you. Take that seed and multiply it, like you said within your word, 30, 60, and 100 times more exceeding abundantly above all they can ask or think. And I thank you, Lord, that as the seed goes into souls, it goes into winning the loss. It goes into seeing New England shaken. It goes in to seeing the gospel spread throughout the world before the end is already done. Take this seed and use it for your glory. And I thank you that just as it was with the little boy's lunch, bring it back to them. It's so much so that they have to have help carrying it all back in. It just has Peter's boat. We thank you, Father, for it in advance. In Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you, Lord. Thank you for every sower. Thank you for every person who has sold into this ministry and been a part of this ministry. We thank you so much for the work that you've done and what you are continuing to do. I thank you even for the testimonies that we will continue to hear and still hear from people who say, well, I've sold and this happened. I and mean, can you believe that this happened? I thank you. It will double even more in Jesus' mighty name. We love you and we thank you, Father, for it. For it and we give you praise in advance in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And we love you guys and we thank you so much for tuning in. If anyone has any questions, let us know. Write to us and have an awesome night.